Hey, it's Mark with Mark's Astro Journey. Tonight I'm going to image the Great Pegasus Cluster, also known as Messier 15. It's a globular cluster, and I invite you to come along for not only the imaging, but also um, processing the images afterwards. So stay tuned during the imaging processing because as I work with Astro Pixel Processor, I'm going to talk about what some of the different controls do on the right hand side there's a set of slider controls once you have your image stack they'll let you make different refinements to try to bring out the most out of the data captured so let's get started so here we are outside it's uh, a little after 6 30 got everything set up here you can see my equipment i just set up a usb hub and dew heater controller on top of the telescope here you can see i've got the guide scope and camera run into the USB hub and I've got two dew heaters hooked up to this uh, dew heater controller. So with this, I end up with three wires. Uh, there's no, there seem to be any great way to deal with these three wires. So I've got one is the power for the dew heater, one is power for the USB hub and one is the USB hub cable. So anyways, I need to work on that. I do have them Velcroed off on one of the legs of the tripods and I have some ties around them and they're all going together here right at the tube. So I'll work on this a little bit, try to make that a little better, but um, could make those cables all tight together, I guess, with some more Velcro or something like that. So tonight I was going to image M15. And here's my skyline. These trees are going to become a conflict after an hour and a half or two. So I'll probably do two hours of imaging and we'll see how it goes. So here I'm sharp cap. I did one plate solve on M15. I'm going to do another one. Um, you know, it's not absolutely necessary, but I'll go ahead and get it lined up exactly. You can see that if you turn on, I'll turn on the reticle here in a minute once it solves and starts the solving. But you can see with the reticle on that it's slightly off center. So we'll let the solving um, reposition it to dead center. And you can see it made a slight adjustment, 0.04 degrees. My settings are 30 seconds for exposure. Gain may seem a little high, but I'm not able to do long exposures right now. I have some problem with the mount, where the mount is not doing well on the deck. Guiding has a lot of backlash. And so if you look at the histogram, it's not too bad. I would like to see it shifted over a little bit to the right, but I'm not going to be able to increase the exposure. And I don't really know... On a, on a open star cluster like this, if increasing the exposure is going to make a lot of difference. If it was a nebula or something, then it might make a difference, but 30 seconds might be actually sufficient for an open star cluster. It's all just experimentation a lot of times with the scene conditions and which target you're going after. So here I am in PhD2 guiding, start looping. I already have the equipment connected. I'm going to auto select a star. You can see peak is 180, 190, 200, hovering around there. So I'm going to start guiding. In a moment, I'll speed this up so you don't have to wait through it. At the time of capturing these images, my mount's having some serious backlash issues. I've sent it off to iOptron support via an RMA to get it looked at to see what's wrong with it. So here back in SharpCap, what I'm going to do is start a capture. And I think I'm going to go for... Two hours. I don't think I can, with the tree line I have, I don't think I can get much, much more than two hours out of this. In fact, even in the two hours, I may start to run into that tree line. So I'll start that off. Shows it's going to end at 8.54 p.m. So I am going to close my laptop lid and let this thing go. And we'll come back and we'll take a look to see how things turn out. So now that our capture is complete of our light frames, we need to uh, capture our darks. Put the cover over the end of the telescope. And since it's a 30 second exposure, I'm gonna go for 30 of them, about 15 minutes of darks. So here I'm going to choose my light frames. And then after that, choose the dark frames. And then once the frames are loaded, I'm going to set the um, sorting to be based upon um, quality. And then I'll kick off the analysis.
So now that the calibration and analysis of the frames is completed, I'm going to sort those frames, review the frames for quality, and make some decisions about which of the frames I'm going to keep. So you can see at the high end on the quality score, it was like 236, and the low end is quite a bit lower. I'm having some issues with the Ioptron Gym 28 mount, and hopefully in the near future I'll have that corrected. But So I like to go through and take some, you know, spot check some of these frames and look at, you know, visually look at them what does the quality of the frames look like like the shape of the stars and just confirm whether or not the mount shifted or was not responding and you can see like a shadow image on the stars so then I usually make a decision about kind of a cutoff point the quality threshold I'm gonna retain the frames and then deselect the rest and use the clean option to remove those and then I can kick off the integrate step which is going to do all the remaining steps to stack to process and stack you know like normalize register, all of those things. So just checking back in on the integration to see how it's progressing and we can see that it is processing at the pixel level and we'll check back in once this is done. So here we see our stacked image, but before we make any refinement, I imagine some people watching the video may not be that familiar with Astro Pixel Processor. So I thought I would just go over a few of the controls and talk about um, what the controls actually do, the slider controls on the right. And I'll go through each one of those quickly and show what the help also displays. There's like a red question mark, which navigates to the help. The slider at the top that has an abbreviation of B represents black or adjust the black point. The next slider abbreviated as W represents white and adjusts the white point. The next slider abbreviated with G represents gamma and applies gamma correction. Scrolling down to a few more of the slider controls, several of the sliders in this DDP or digital development process section are disabled until you enable this saturation checkbox. The slider abbreviated as ST stands for strength and it adjusts the DDP stretch. The slider abbreviated BA stands for base and adjusts the DDP base level and can help show faint signals. The slider abbreviated HL stands for highlights and protects the DDP highlights. The slider abbreviated SAT represents saturation and adjusts the DDP saturation. The slider abbreviated SAT.TH represents saturation threshold. This adjusts the DDP saturation background protection threshold. We'll scroll down and look at the last few slider controls here. Slider abbreviated CON represents contrast and adjusts the DDP contrast. The slider abbreviated sharp represents sharpness and increases DDP sharpness with edge emphasis. Last slider label protect represents star protect and this adjusts DDP sharp and star protection. You may have noticed as we were going through these sliders that five of them, B, W, S, T, B, A, and CON, have these uh, buttons to the right and left with a number in the button. These are zoom in, zoom out buttons, and they allow us to adjust the sliders with high preci precision. And you can zoom in or zoom out on the data range, giving you that higher precision adjustment. So I tried to go through that as quick as I could. I know it's a lot to absorb probably, but I thought it might be helpful just to hear a brief run through of what those slider controls do. So I'll probably only make a few adjustments here. First, I'm gonna adjust the black point. And once I adjust it, I'll probably zoom Zoom in and zoom out just to double check on the effect of that. Next I'm going to enable the saturation controls and adjust the saturation a little bit. I'll also adjust the strength of the stretch and a minor adjustment to the base level which affects the faint signal and a minor tweak to the gamma correction. So I'm going to save this image as both a TIFF and as a JPEG. I usually increase the DPI to 4800 before saving. And as far as the JPEG file goes, increase the quality up to 100% on the JPEG file. So I'd like to take a look at the image outside of Astro Pixel Processor to see if I want to maybe make any other adjustments. I think I will make a slight adjustment to the black point and then resave the TIFF and JPEG images. And I'll keep the original ones uh, by choosing no so that the original ones don't get overwritten. Taking a look at the image file now with that adjustment applied, it looks better to me. I'm going to open the image in GIMP so I can uh, make a few more refinements to get the most out of the data that was captured. First, I'm going to adjust the exposure and the black level a little bit. And 
And sometimes as you're making these adjustments, it's helpful to zoom in just to see the effect of that. I think I'll also adjust the brightness and contrast some. And then just uh, looking here to see the effect of some of these adjustments. I'll then uh, export this as several formats, including GIMP in the file name, so I can distinguish at what stage of image processing I was when I produced the file. So here's the image processed by GIMP. And here's the image after processing an APP. And here they are side by side. Well, I hope you enjoyed that imaging and data processing session. I find that uh, there's so much to learn about these tools to do you know, this imaging and, and also the image processing. And for from this perspective of Astro Pixel Processor, um, I am, you know, gradually learning a little bit more. But as you can see, I think when I went through those slider controls, it's quite a bit to absorb and quite a bit to understand. And there's also a whole set of tools that I haven't delved into yet. There's an option for tools. And so that's another part of the tool or the application that I'd like to learn more about. And uh, maybe uh, you found that helpful, like if you, you know, hadn't really used APP before and you wanted to understand what some of its capabilities were, talking through some of those slider controls on the right. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any suggestions or comments uh, with the video. And wishing you clear skies.